I got a you know positive message of support um, about Bruce Lee and Jeet Kune Do. I want to read the message, give a little feedback and what I what I think about it. it. Says this person is a couple years older than yourself. I find your opinions and your videos intriguing and deeply thoughtful with regard to your viewpoints and the various issues you are referring to. With regards to Bruce Lee, who like yourself, I study from him directly through his various books and viewing his movements on film. Ji Kune Do was not totally created by him like many people believe, but had a great input and philosophical influence by one of the men that inspired him, Jidu Krishnamurti. Without Yip, Yip Man, there would be no Bruce Lee. Without J. Krishnamurti, there would have been no Ji Kune Do. Many of Bruce's philosophical quotes are influenced by Krishnamurti. Many people don't realize this. I'm very impressed by you as like Bruce. You're not only all broad but have an intelligent mind also without ego as opposed to the majority of the martial artists out there today. Keep up the good work and I hope to meet you one day. Alright, thank you for the message. You know, I... You know, if you're watching this response video, thank you and, you know, you're always welcome to come to Chicago and visit the school. It would be great to meet. Um, with that being said, I just want to respectfully give my thoughts on what this person said. Um, as far as J. Krishnamurti is concerned, you know, I, I've, I was very aware of that, that a lot of Bruce Lee's thoughts were inspired by, borrowed from, or maybe even taken directly from J. Krishnamurti. Um, and that's the real way of studying Bruce Lee and Jeet Kune Do is to go first to the source, which is him, and then learn from who he learned from. Um, Yip Man doesn't have any reading material or anything published to really focus on or any videos, um, but Bruce Lee got a lot of his ideas and the way that he thought about the world and about the martial arts and about life from Krishnamurti. Not just Krishnamurti, but Buddha, and if you notice the Tao of Ji Kune Do, so that's the Tao Te Ching, look up on Lao Tzu, uh, that's a huge foundation to Bruce Lee's work and just the Chinese martial arts in general. You also see that the Chinese martial arts is led by the Tao, um, same thing, that's what Tao, um, Taoism and also Tai Chi, the, 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 the idea of Yin Yang. Bruce Lee would use the yin yang symbol. So if you want to learn about the martial arts, learn about Bruce Lee, you got to learn about the yin yang. So yin yang, Dao, Dao Te Ching, Krishnamurti. Um, Bruce Lee was the one who influenced me and inspired to start studying Krishnamurti and Eastern philosophy, which led me to eventually to Osho. You know, Osho is my favorite person to study. Krishnamurti is great, but I think Osho is much even much better in my opinion um, so people that really want to learn about Bruce Lee they should study J. Krishnamurti um, and this person knows that I know that and um, that's the real way you know and that's the way that's that's pointing you towards the spiritual meditative aspect of the martial arts of which people a lot of people are they're unaware of or they don't realize that that's the foundation of Bruce's work which is pretty much pretty much almost plagiarized and taken from Krishnamurti um, but really Bruce wasn't about publishing his stuff in which to make money off of it but you could tell that he took those and then just pretty much just put with it within his own expression and it's like you got Bruce Lee which is the younger um, high energetic athletic person that's expressing these teachings and then you got Krishnamurti who's wiser, older, more experienced. He's like the true master that's overlooking Bruce Lee. Um, as far as Yip Man is concerned, you know, I think this guy, you kind of, you know, in my opinion, he's giving a little too much credit to Yip Man. He's saying, you know, there wouldn't be Bruce Lee. Um, he said he wouldn't be without Yip Man, there would be no Bruce Lee. I don't agree to that. I would say I would say without Hollywood, there wouldn't be Bruce Lee. Um, and even maybe to a further extent, maybe without Raymond Chow, there wouldn't be Bruce Lee. Um, because it was Raymond Chow 
who was the one who made Bruce Lee famous. He was the director or the or the producer who made Bruce Lee famous in Hong Kong. And then when Bruce Lee got famous in Hong Kong, then he was allowed to get into Hollywood and make Enter the Dragon, and then he became famous worldwide. So, you know, Yip Man, he could have practiced with Yip Man his whole life. But if he never got into film, if, if he never met Raymond Chow, if he never made film in um, Hong Kong, uh, he definitely wouldn't have gotten to make Enter the Dragon, and we still wouldn't even know about him. You know, we, we really wouldn't. And we might not even know even about Jackie Chan or even about Jet Li. We wouldn't know about Wing Chun. Uh, we wouldn't even know, we wouldn't know about Yip Man. Um, Bruce Lee studied in the Yip Man for about five years. I think he started at the age of 13 or 16, but just five years. And, and then he went to America and then he went to college and then he started to keep enhancing his, his practice. I think too much credit has been given to Yip Man. Um, Yip Man is not the one that made him Bruce Lee famous. Uh, essentially, Bruce Lee is the one who made Yip Man famous. But who made Bruce Lee famous? Um, Raymond Chow, the person, the director, the producer of, you know, the, the Hong Kong film, um, gave Bruce Lee the opportunity to get into the the film in Hong Kong, um, and then eventually Hollywood. Hollywood is what is why we know Bruce Lee, and. You know, it's like me without YouTube. You know, it's like I studied martial arts when I was, you know, the, the combative aspect to start at the age of 16. Um, I studied under uh, Sifu in, 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 in Chicago's Chinatown. Um, but he didn't make me. You know, it's like um, in the end of the day, you know, my parents are the ones who made me, but then who made my parents, it, it could go on and on. I mean, the source goes to the Tao eventually, you know, and that's why it's the Tao of Jeet Kune Do, um, even before God. I mean, Tao, you know, study the Tao. I mean, that is the creation of, you know, that, that is the, the, the source of everything, you know, and that's the way that, that I really see it. I mean, you know, I think a lot of times people might give a little too much credit to the to the person that might have introduced the person to the martial arts, but yeah, they deserve credit. But um, really, he could be studying with with um, Yip Man for fifty years, but we still wouldn't even know who Bruce Lee is or was. You know, it's because he he had that more that effort from that that drive from it within. To, to go further beyond just being, just learning from Yip Man, you know, and that's it. You know, he, he learned what he needed to learn, and then he ended up moving to America, you know, and he learned a lot in America. Um, he studied, you know, he trained with Chuck Norris, and trained with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and trained with Danny Insano, and he studied with a lot of different people from different styles. Um, he started to direct his own movies, he, he uh, choreographed his own fight scenes. He was studying from Buddha, studying from Tao. Stud you know, his library had over 2,000 books. You know, and, and he was studying from Krishnamurti. And he took the teachings from Krishnamurti. Um, he, a lot of his teachings, a lot of his writings were incorporating a lot of boxing techniques. And he learned a lot from watching Muhammad Ali. You look at the Tao Jeet Kune Do, a lot of it is not even Win Chun techniques. A lot of it is stuff other than Win Chun. You know, it's a lot of lot, he studied fencing, um, studied savat. You know, he was using nunchucks. Nunchucks was introduced to him by Danny Insano. You know, so the double sticks, and he was using the nunchucks in the videos. That had nothing to do with Yip Man. You know, I mean, like Bruce Lee never even performed any Win Chun forms in any of the movies that he made. He never even mentioned Win Chun in, in any of his movies. He never mentioned Yip Man in any of his movies. You know, Bruce Lee studied a lot to better himself, to go beyond Yip Man, to go beyond Win Chun. That is just, just a little bit of the basics. But his before he even met y Yip Man, he was good at cha cha dancing. His parents were what got him involved from birth into film, into becoming an actor, and really. It is because he became a famous actor is why we know him. So 
it wouldn't be right to say there wouldn't be Bruce Lee without Yip Man. The nurse at the doctor's office is what named him Bruce. His last name comes from his parents. The, his parents gave him the name Bruce Lee. You know, his parents gave him the name, or, you know, his, the name of Loisiu, you know, Loisiu Lung, the little dragon, was given to him not from Yip Man. You know, his parents created him. His last name, they put him into acting, they put him in the position to become charismatic, to become influential for the people out there. You know, so it was his own drive. You know, when he was a little child, he he told his parents that he's gonna be a household name. He's gonna, you know, everybody's gonna know him like they know Coca Cola. He said that before he even met Yip Man. His drive, his intensity to succeed, to become famous, to become a legend, started early, way before Yip Man. It started at birth. He was born a dragon. In the year of the dragon, the hour of the dragon, he was born to become who he was. This had nothing to do with Yip Man. You know, so if anything, it's his parents who were responsible for the Bruce Lee. And if it's not his parents, then it's the Tao. You know, if it's not the Tao, if it's not his parents, then, you know, Yip Man had a, had a role into introducing him to the martial arts. But he evolved way beyond that. And Christian Murdy had a huge influence for him to evolve beyond being stuck in that system and to go into the creation of Jeet Kune Do. But Bruce Lee, you know, the why we know Bruce Lee, you know, the person, Raymond Chow, who gave him a chance to become famous in Hong Kong, um, making the movies, and Hollywood you know, gave him a chance to create Enter the Dragon. So, you know, we got to be thankful for that. You know, Yip Man had a, had, a, had a role in there. But Muhammad Ali, Chuck Norris, Raymond Chow, Hollywood, um, the people that got him involved in the Green Hornet, his parents, um, you know, all the people that he's ever trained with in his entire life, the 2,000 books that he was reading in the library, um, going to college and studying there, studying philosophy. Linda Lee, you know, Linda Lee had a huge impact on his life. You know, his children, Brandon and Shannon. I mean, everybody had a part in his life, and Yip Man was not everything, not at all. You know, so that's what I have to say about that, you know, but... Other than that, you know, the whole Drake Krishnamurti thing, um, he pointed it out, and that is very important. Uh, people that really want to know about Bruce Lee, they need to study like Jay Krishnamurti. They need to study the Tao Te Ching. You know, remember the Tao Ji Kun Do. Remember his, uh, his logo. It has the yin yang. Do you know what the yin yang means? Do you know what that symbolizes? Do you know what Tao is? Do you know the teachings of Jay Krishnamurti? You look further into his books, you, you'll see, you know, him mentioning Zen. Do you know what Zen is? You know, so learn from his teachers. And really, Bruce Lee died at 32. You know, the person that wrote me this, this letter is older than me. I'm 36. He said he's a few years older than me. He's 38. So really, our aim is to try to get to where Bruce was at. And if possible, go beyond. You know, and... Honestly, you know, he's used, he's, he should be there as an inspiration, but to not be limited by him, um, to see that it, it potentially we can go beyond the standards that he set, you know, to be a representative of the martial arts. You know, don't stop at where he, where he left off, but to go further, go beyond. And really, that's what I mean by Osho. Um, I feel that his, Osho's teachings are way beyond Jay Krishnamurti, in my opinion. You know, um, and um, learn as much as we can from Bruce Lee, but try to go beyond. If we can't go beyond, then still keep using him as a as a influence in our lives to become better and to improve. 
within our path in the martial arts.